Hello everybody and welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about Tree of Thoughts, deliberate problem solving with large language models. So this is an interesting new take on a classic idea. You know, how do we get these language models to perform better at these kind of more complex reasoning tasks, right? So I just thought that I'd show you kind of the result and then we'll show you how we got there. So first of all, the game that we're playing today is called the Game of 24, and the idea is simple. We are given a certain number of numbers, we must use all of them, and we must get to the target of 24. So there's going to be a total of three steps, because we have to use all of the numbers, and we're provided with an initial four numbers. So we can use this tree of thought method to find the correct answer. So when given the initial input of 4, 5, 6, 10, we can use this tree of thought method to get to the correct answer, which is 4 times 5 is 20, 20 minus 6 is 14, and 10 plus 14 is 24. So we've used all of our numbers, and we have the correct answer. So that's great, but how did we get there, right? Well, the model shows us some outputs above, and we're going to peek into the code to go over a little bit more how we actually got there. But the first place we're going to start, of course, is the paper. What is the real novel idea here? We have chain of thought, right? We have this idea of prompting language models to, you know, split tasks down into their basic little quanta and then go through them one at a time. However, we don't have any kind of like exploration available for the LLM. So it just kind of does it in order, right? With this tree of thoughts implementation, we give the model the ability to search over some you know sample space of generated answers and pick the best ones we allow it to even backtrack right so we give it access to a lot more context or information that it can use and then we let it evaluate those options and proceed forward with the ones that it thinks are best based on whatever strategy we're implementing so this is a great way to show us kind of how this model works so we have, you know, in traditional chain of thought, we have this idea of we give it an input and then it generates some, you know, specific little pieces of thought that it goes through step by step. We also have this idea of self-consistency with chain of thought. Now, that's it's not a bad idea to do that. However, it doesn't give us the full breadth of ability to move laterally and backwards when we're considering what the actual processes or substeps are, right? As you can see, these thoughts are all just cascading into each other and then we pick some. It's not bad, but we want to leverage the LLM's ability to be very good at a specific task in order to get us to a place where it's able to perform more complex tasks, right? So we're breaking these tasks down. And then instead of asking the model to just, you know, review what it's put down, we let the model choose at each of these steps. And so they talk about the key ideas of this strategy on page three. And specifically, I want to focus on two really, I think, core ideas here, which is thought decomposition and then thought generator. Yes, there is an evaluator, you know, it's that's fine. That can that's kind of flexible and they're they're using uh, you know, they have a couple different options that you can use, but I really want to focus in on these two pieces, right? Number 1, the tree of thoughts model depends on us breaking our thoughts into something that is small enough so that language models can generate promising and diverse samples and yet big enough so that LMs can evaluate its prospect towards problem solving. So the idea here is we still do want to break our task down into these bite-sized tasks that we can perform kind of one after another in a way, right? They don't have to occur one after the other, but it is important that we break these tasks down into those bite-sized pieces. So the thought generator is broken down into two main strategies here. We have the idea to sample thoughts. Now this is going to be you know, better for tasks that have a larger space from which we want to pull our thoughts. So we're not just talking about, you know, a simple equation. We're talking about these complex kind of ideas or concepts. And then our proposed thoughts, which we're just, you know, generating sequentially using some proposed prompt. Um, you know, we'll, we'll look at some examples of exactly what those are. 
this is better when we're talking about things that are more simply represented. So, you know, like we're looking for an equation or something like a word, right? A short and kind of constrained idea. We have our evaluator. That's just to check to see how we're doing and help make decisions. This is broken down into two major camps. We have value and we have vote. So in the case that we have value, we're just talking about turning it into some scalar. Uh, the scalar basically, you know, being some range of one to 10 or wh whatever it is. The idea is that we're turning it into a score and then we're telling the, and then we're getting the model to say, okay, this is a good score or this is a bad score. Uh, you know, the idea here being that we want what the model thinks is best overall. It doesn't really matter what the score is, just as long as we can infer which the model thinks is quote unquote best for the given task. Then we have the ability to vote. Essentially, we're just saying, hey, given these few things, which would you choose? Vote is similar to self-refine in which we are asking it to provide feedback on its outputs. And this is great if you are you don't have like, you know, say for the game of 24 and we're working with that, uh, you know, that example that we had here, this five, four, five, six, ten, right? If we get some ludicrous answer right away, like say we have 100 and, and, then, a, and then three fifties, we're going to be able to pretty quickly decide, hey, that's actually not going to work out for us in the long run. So we're going to score that pretty low, right? That's not, this doesn't seem like a great way to get started. Vote is more meant for things where it might be subjective or it might be harder to quantify, right? It, it, it's difficult to say, oh, well, this is more likely or less likely to be correct. It's more like, what do you think is best of these four options? I think there's a ton of value left in exploring what is the best way to make the decision on which of the possible thoughts is best. And the paper indicates that as well. You know, this is a space that's ripe for innovation as we all evolve with this technology together. Lastly, we have the search algorithm. This is coming from DSA. If you practice your DSA, you should be good to go with this. The idea here is we're either using breadth first search BFS, which is just going to kind of keep our set of B most promising states per step, or we're using depth first search where we're actually going to check, you know, how good is the most promising state first until they reach the final output or they're like, actually, this is impossible. If you're up on your DSA, this is straightforward. But the general idea here is we're either keeping a bunch of states that we're happy about, or we're trying to get to the bottom of the problem first and then we're only coming back up if we hit a wall or we find the correct answer. So in the case of the examples they provided, both the text generation and the game of 24 use BFS and the crossword puzzle uses depth first search. So the task we're gonna focus on today is the game of 24. It's a fairly straightforward idea. The, the game itself is fairly simple, right? You are given four numbers. You must use all four numbers in order to get the number 24. That's the entire game, right? So uh, for a human, this is fairly straightforward. I mean, it still might take you some time, but it is in fact straightforward. And, you know, it is very difficult for models to do. So we have the example here. We're not going to spend too much time on this example because we're just going to go through the code. And I think the outputs do a better job explaining what's actually going on here. This is kind of the meat of the paper, right? This is why this is a paper. It is basically saying that this, uh, this tree of thought is better than your traditional input output prompt and chain of thought prompt, including chain of prompt with self consistency where we have K equal to 100. Now, as you can see, this is like much better out of the gate, right? Kind of crazy, to be honest with you. You know, but what if we set this up to be fair for the other methods, right? So we give them kind of a, a best of whatever. So, you know, best of 100, uh, you know, K equal 10 for your, for your self-refine. And you can see that it's not close, right? Even when we're talking about a per node effectiveness. So this is the number of nodes, right? Nodes in this case are considered individual thoughts. 
we can see that the tree of thoughts method just just crushes the IO and the chain of thought method, even when they're given like the most, you know, help. So we're going to start from how we implement this in the notebook. And then we're going to move on to kind of exploring what each part of this script is doing. So first things first, we have some dependencies to install. We do have to provide an open AI key. This is going to be making a lot of calls to your open AI API endpoint. So make sure that you, uh, you know, you're aware of that. We also just want to clone into this repository. Uh, we can do that so we can easily run the scripts. And we're going to run the breadth first search script in order to employ TOT properly. As you can see, this is done through this Python run.py. We can pass a number of parameters. So the task we're going to play is game of 24. The task file is located here. The task start index is 900. The task end index is 1000. We're going to use the propose method. So that's what we talked about before. We're going to ask it to propose a number of potential solutions. We are evaluating this by value. We are greedily selecting which ones we want to keep. The number of evaluate samples we're using is three and the number of select samples we're going to be taking is five. Really quickly before we get into the code, let's just look at how this thing works, right? So first things first, we do start with some data and this is what we start with. Essentially just this list of four numbers. In this case, four, five, six, 10. What's gonna happen here is that the tree of thoughts is going to generate us a number of potential first steps. So you can see here, we have a bunch of different first steps. You know, we, we, we just got a ton, right? Uh, four plus five equals nine, which leaves us with six, nine, and 10. We've got five plus six equals 11, which leaves us with four, 10, and 11. I mean, the idea here is that we're just generating a bunch of different samples, right? Then we score those samples. So we generate some values for them. As you can see, it all of these all of these samples seem fine except for this last one which is rated a little bit lower. Let's check and see which one that is. This is actually fine. We could use this, but the model has deemed it not be useful, so instead we are going to drop it like it's hot. Now we are going to only keep the best 5. We're using the greedy allocation here, so it's just keeping the ones that were sorted to the top. So we have this four plus five equals nine, this five plus six, this six plus six. You know, we're, we're just keeping these as the first five that we see that all achieved a score of three. Now we move to the next step. And the next step is just, you know, hey, it's step two. So here we go. We get, again, a bunch of different samples. You can see that it's tacked on the second part. And then again, we score them and we see which ones we want to keep. In this case, you can see that two of them score very highly and the rest score rather mediumly or very lowly. And the ones we wanted to keep are, we have this, we have this guy that's looking pretty promising, right? Four times five equals 20, leaving us with six, 10, 20. Then 20 minus six equals 14, leaving us with 10 and 14. Boy, that's close. Then we have four times five equals 20 and then 10 plus 20 equals 30 with six left over. It scores those very highly, so we're going to keep them. And then we're gonna keep as well some of these threes that are kind of left over. Uh, only three of them since we're keeping the top five each time. We do the same thing, but with the third line. And so our first one is just correct. So we don't really need to do much more. It gets a high value and we go ahead and we choose that one as the highest rated answer. Uh, at this time, we have completed the problem successfully, and that's fantastic. So let's look and see how this is actually happening in the code a little bit. Again, we're starting from this CSV that contains all of these different puzzles. Then we're selecting the game 24 task. The game 24 task in this case is basically a compilation of things that helps us interface with our particular task. So it helps us test our output. It helps us wrap our prompts in whatever kind of prompt we're using. So you can see here, this is our proposed prompt wrap. We also have our value prompt wrap. Next up, we can take a look at what these prompts actually look like. So for the game of 24, our prompts look pretty straightforward, right? We have an input, we have some possible next steps. Then we have an input and we ask it for possible next steps. 
spoiler alert, this is how we generate a bunch of different proposed actions to take. Then in this piece of code, this is where all the magic happens, right? Essentially all we're doing is because we're using this proposed prompt, we're gonna get a bunch of proposals. We're gonna convert those proposals into some new ideas. We're going to use the value evaluate method to figure out how to value those. Again, this is all the LLM making these evaluations. We're going to use the greedy method to pick which ones we like the best. Greedy here just means we're gonna pick the ones that get the biggest score. And that's really it. It's incredibly straightforward to use. The idea itself is fairly straightforward, right? All we're saying is, hey, instead of taking, you know, one prompt, seeing how it does, let's take a bunch of little prompts, break that problem into those prompts, and then evaluate them at each step and only choose and keep the best X, right? So this is a simple idea, but it's a very powerful idea. Uh, you know, if you're doing something that's critical or you're trying to do tasks that require more complex reasoning from your LLMs, I would definitely suggest Tree of Thought. If you're not doing those tasks, this is overkill for sure. It is very expensive because it is calling the API a lot of times. But again, if we're trying to get our LLMs to be good at playing these kinds of games or showcase those complex reasoning skills, this is a great way to do it, and it's relatively easy to implement yourself or adapt this code to whatever tasks that you want to do. So that's all for me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, click the like button, and we will see you in the next one.